Hello, my name is Kiriath, and today we are going to take a look at the Necron range. We're going to do a range review for the Necrons. Seems like the right sort of time to do it, given the announcement of a new Illuminor Zeraz, who looks absolutely solid, I'm sure you will agree. And uh, this, I thought, would probably be a shorter one, but I forgot how many characters there are in the Necron range. A really good number of characters, in fairness. Now, something that a few of you have asked for is comparisons to, like, older models when we do these sorts of things. Now, I did trial doing something like that over the weekend, and it made the video absurdly long. Like, it's already pretty long anyway, most of these, especially the 40k ones and the Age of Sigma ones, because there's a lot of models, there's a lot of stuff to go through, and so they frequently hit, like, 30 to 45 minutes. Adding in, like, comparisons to previous generations of models more than doubles the length of them. So, that's becoming its own series. There's going to be a series called New Old, which we will be doing hopefully from Wednesday onwards. I thought probably we'll do Necrons again for that, so we can have a look at some of the stuff that I remember in closer detail compared to the stuff that is now available. It's a little bit doubling up, but it hopefully means that it'll be a bit less clunky and it won't be the length of a feature film every time we do one of these so yeah we're just going to go through what's available right now for these and then there'll be a lovely nostalgia filled sort of uh, look back at, at some of the older stuff later on in the week so let's get let's get cracking let's get cracking with the uh, with this first so we're starting with the uh, the necron obelisk now this is a model that was not available back when i played uh necrons and I kind of wish that it was, because I actually really like this. It's all the things I like about Necrons, really. It's weird, it's distinctly alien. It's not... I would say this particular one is not overly sort of Egyptian in space. I mean, it obviously does have the whole pyramid sort of vibe to it, and it does have the, uh, the Necron symbols, but it looks distinctly technological and, and just a bit weird, which I think is one of the nice, nicer sort of elements of Necron stuff. Some of it is properly alien and incomprehensible, which I really enjoy. This being a prime example of that. Of course, this doubles up as well as a uh, as a Tesseract Vault, so you've got a, a, a shard of a Catan in there as well. I do like this model a lot. It is chunky, it is massive, it is a big, big old model, but... I think it has the right sort of uh, imposing alien presence, sort of exactly what you want from your 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 race of metallic skeleton boys. Of course, that is the Tesseract Vault variant. I have to admit, I prefer the Obelisk, just because I feel like it's more unknowable, not knowing what's inside. With it all being closed up, it's like it's some sort of it, it's like a Pandora's box situation. You have no idea what's in there. With it all spread out and stretched out, yes, you do get to see the Catan, which has been imprisoned, which is cool, but I don't know, it loses something of the mystery to me when it's uh, when it's fully open like that. It's also by, you know, due to the way that, uh, due to how heavy the corners are, it does sort of tilt a bit. I've seen it a few times on, on quite a few of these that people have painted where the the kind of extended sections droop slightly just because of the extra weight on them. There's not a huge amount actually keeping them attached to the central kind of core bit of it, which means that it sort of droops a little bit, which for me is only a small thing, but it takes away from it a little bit because it makes it a bit more... It makes it more affected by physics, and for the most part, Necrons don't really care about that, which is a very minor complaint. Again, it's just one of those little tiny sort of things that it doesn't really matter. You know, it's just one of those personal preference things. It's one of those kind of, I noticed it and then went, oh, I suppose, okay. And then the more I thought about it, the more I didn't like it. Very nitpicky, not really a problem, but, you know, every now and again, there'll be a model that you really, really like, and you'll notice just one little thing and go, ah, uh, uh. Uh, it'd be nice if it didn't have that, but there's a decent amount of detail on this as well. I will say the inside feels like it could be a bit more detailed, but then again, it's such a big model and there's so much going on, I don't know whether that would actually just detract from things a little bit, to be fair. And uh, I will say the the kind of like, the little cube bits that are on the inside kind of spreading out 
they do look cool. They do look funky. They're interesting. It's overall a, a nice model. I do like it, but yeah, the obelisk is definitely my preferred uh, look for it. Look only. I mean, in terms of in terms of game rules, as far as I'm aware, they're pretty different things. So really, that sort of thing doesn't really. That's not really factoring into any of these any of these uh, range reviews. It's more just the model than anything else, because as you are probably aware by now, it's all rule of cool for me, <laughs> and nothing else matters. Now the classic, oh the classic monolith. I remember. I I just I have such fond memories of trying to put this flipping thing together. Boy, right. Well, <laughs> for <laughs> I mean. I, I feel like it wouldn't be too bad now, but I remember really struggling to put this thing together. I like really struggled with it. Just so many like, it's just like massive. If I remember correctly, it is literally just like four big old flat panels that you have to lean together in a certain way so they all fit together. And I remember it being real tricky. I don't think the big crystal in the center has aged very well. I I don't know that it looked great to begin with, to be honest. In fact, I painted mine. Uh, like I didn't paint it. I washed it. I did a. I was using washes on this before I was using washes on actual other models. <laughs> like I was like, well, I don't. I want it to be not green, but I don't want it to be completely like uh, like opaque. So I ended up kind of. Making a kind of wash out of uh, out of black and water, and just trying to make it a bit less fluorescent green because I didn't like the look of it. I still don't think that aspect of it is aged that well. And I mean, when you look at it compared to like the obelisk, there's there's a lot of it's similar principle, but the obelisk has better execution. I would argue it looks more interesting. You know, visually there is more going on. Than, uh, than the monolith. The monolith actually looks pretty dated now. When you, especially when you consider that a lot of the like all the Necron symbols, looking at it, pretty much apart from the one that's the hatch over the uh, the portal at the front, they're all transfers. They're not carved into it at all. It's a pretty simplistic model. Going back and look at it, looking at it again, especially compared to the uh, to the obelisk. That's pretty much the way I painted mine. Um, Nowhere near that well, but that's how I painted mine. And uh, yeah, I d I did what it what you can see there on mine was like painted over, painted over the portal at the front and painted the the uh, big crystal, uh, sort of not quite to the same standard, obviously. It's uh, it's aged not great. It still looks okay. It still looks kind of cool, and it's gonna have that nostalgia value for me pretty much till the end of all time. But. I just feel like the obelisk is a better execution of the same of the same principle. Just more detail on it would be nice. Whereas some Games Workshop stuff has got over detailed, the monolith is, in my opinion, under detailed. Especially if you don't use any transfers on it, where it just becomes a big block of not much. Although that being said, certain things. Um, if we skip ahead just slightly, where is it? There we go. There we go. Um, certain things like there are certain shapes that have carried through to like the ghost arc, uh, which I do like. A lot of it has become more curved than the monolith. I think without those bits at the top, it would it would look considerably less. Uh, it wouldn't have kept up as well if it didn't have a, a few curves here and there. Because overall, the Necron stuff has got more interesting in terms of the shapes used. Um, but yeah, it's. I do like it. I still like it. It's just a little bit dated now. Just a little bit dated. And of course, we now have stuff like this. So we have like the Triarch Stalker. I like the principle of the Triarch Stalker. I like the legs. I like the 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 underslung guns. I actually really like the little weird claw things on the front. I like all of that. It's the fact that it's piloted. I don't like. I would. I would seriously consider not using um like the console section. So where the where the uh, the Necron is actually piloting this thing, if I had one of these, I would scrap that and I would use like a uh, a Canoptic Wraith or something and I would build it into it or or even a uh, a spider. Like I, I would 
I'd build something into it so that it's not piloted. It is instead its own separate creature, so to speak. The piloted stuff for Necrons, I'm just... This is an example of it where it's like, I like almost all of it if the person in it was integrated more, if the Necron in it was integrated more, I would be on board 100%, because it is literally, with this, the legs look great. I really like the way they've done the legs. I really like the gun placement. I like that big kind of, like, orb of energy that's in the very center. The Where it falls down for me is is literally just the sort of chariot section on top. That is the only bit I don't like. That is the only bit I'd change. And the thing is, it is easy to change. I will say that I've seen a few different conversions of Treyarch Stalkers, and they all look decent, and it's not that difficult to shift that Necron out of there and put something a little bit a little bit different in. Um, but the overall design, I really like. The overall design is cool. I just... I would just take take the lad out and put something else in there. There's a good few candidates for that that we'll take a look at as we go along. The Annihilation Barge and the uh, Catacomb Command Barge, it's pretty much the same situation. I do like the Annihilation Barge. I think in this case the piloted thing works a little bit better. Um, I think because it's floating, because it's hovering, I, I, I don't mind it quite as much. A big part of it for me as well, I will say, is is built-in kind of bias towards the integrated look of things due to having a decent number of destroyers back in the day. And uh, destroyers, of course, had the floating platform, and then the upper half of them was a Necron immortal body, if I remember correctly. And so I, I sort of have this like built-in thing of, well, that was how it looked, because that was really the only example of... of of that sort of thing the Necrons had at the time. Uh, so when I see things like the uh, the Annihilation Barge and the Treyarch Stalker, I have an inbuilt expectation as to what that's going to be in terms of how it's piloted, how it's moved, how the actual Necrons are integrated into it, and then that's not how it is. And it's one of those things where I've tried to shift that and just to look at it for what it is, but I still find myself going back to preferring the idea of a full integration as opposed to a piloted thing which is similar to the Annihilation Barge. I do like it. It is, again, a, it's an interesting model because it's built in a way that like very little else is built. Like, it's, it's, a, unique, it's a unique kind of design. Um, it doesn't really harken to any of the other factions' ability, like uh, methods of doing things or ability of doing things. I do like how unique and how distinctly Necron it is. But again, it's one of those things where I would want to do something to make it a bit more destroyer-like in terms of the things piloting it, which, again, is just... That is very much a subjective thing, very much a personal thing, and built entirely off a, off a bias of, you know, doing stuff with Necrons very early on when they were a playable army, like when they had their first codex is when I was messing with it. So, you know, a lot of it stems from that. This is a similar situation with the Catacomb Command Barge. I don't mind the concept of it at all. Um, I will say I prefer the Annihilation Barge. I think it looks more imposing. The Catacomb Command Barge, I think, is actually quite a fun idea. It is quite a fun concept. But it's not something that I think I would ever run myself. Because it's, it's cool, but I would much prefer to create a Necron Lord of my own using various other bits and do some of the, and like I mean that's not the right phrase I think I would run a Catacomb Command Barge but I would convert a, a, a Lord and do it that way and, and run it like proxy it as that have accounts as as opposed to the actual model it's not bad it's not bad don't get me wrong but it doesn't quite doesn't quite hit the spot for me the Command Barge not in the same way that the uh, Annihilation Barge does. But then the Annihilation Barge has got a massive gun in the centre of it, which probably does a lot to, to uh, film with a little bit of bias towards it, because who doesn't like a giant floating gun platform? The Doom Scythe, I, <laughs> I do like. I prefer the Forge World sort of, not version. I prefer the enclosed, uh, the enclosed cockpit. But that is the same for any... For literally anything that isn't a jet bike or a bike. 
I mean, I don't even like the open cockpits and land speeders, and that's like a basis of that thing's entire design. Uh, it, it, that just goes back to you know the whole thing of not wanting something unnecessarily exposed, uh, like bare heads on Terminators, that sort of thing. It all it all filters down into that sort of general bias towards keeping certain stuff like hidden away. The overall design of it, I really really like. It is a cool vehicle. It does look cool. It's one of those ones that I don't even... There's very little I would do to one of these. Because I, I do like them enough that I'd, I would just leave it how it is. It's a, it's a cool design for a for a vehicle, definitely. And in fairness, I mean, the, there is cool details on the pilot. Like the fact it's got three eyes instead of two or one. You know, it's it's not... It's not a bad looking thing at all. And there are still little things in there like the the kind of the repeating like the, the the repeated motif of like that kind of metal spinal column that's through a lot of the Necron stuff. I really like what they've done with that on this. You know, the fact that it's it's similar to the Wraith and it's similar to the uh to the spiders and it's similar to to so many other things. It's it's a really cool kind of repeated thing that goes on and it's available on pretty much everything and it's integrated well into pretty much everything as well it is cool i do like it okay now we did have a quick look at the uh the ghost arc and the doomsday arc these ones are weird i'm still not sure how i feel about the ghost arc or the doomsday arc i still don't know exactly how i feel about them on the one hand on the one hand I do especially like the Doomsday Arc because it is just a massive gun carrier and it's just it, it's just so many guns, so many guns on that thing. It looks quality. But this is this is a design where everything else is like kind of Egyptians in space, metal Egyptians in space. I don't know what it is. I don't know whether it's even correct. I get more viking from parts of this the the front of this thing the kind of repeated shape that you've got that's at the very front of this vehicle and is repeated all along the sides at some point probably incorrectly i have seen something that was like viking base that had a similar design to this and then that's all i can see and it looks not out of place because it is a repeated like it is a repeat like repeated thing that you see in other in other Necron stuff, but for some reason it just looks slightly off, and I can't work out why it looks slightly off. I mean, there are aspects of both of these that I like. The detail on the on the Ghost Arc of having all of the Necron warriors still stood in there, I really like that. It looks like it'd be awful to paint, but I do like that. The uh, the kind of the way that it's powered at the back you've got like the big kind of exhaust vents and stuff at the back that again that same kind of necron spine thing down the bottom and uh and behind the pilot as well it's all stuff that i like i like all of those bits um why why you would put the the rotating thing for the doomsday arc under the uh the go like for the why why have they done that <laughs> so this is the page for the ghost arc where you get no spinny thing this is the page for the doomsday arc where you do get a spinny thing but it's for the ghost arc and the doomsday arc that feels like a mistake someone's made but yeah like the back of this thing i really really like in fact it's, i think it's pretty similar to the uh command barge isn't it it's not the same but there's you know again there's that kind of repeated style which is really unique to these guys but it's just, I don't know, I don't know. It's just the, the front of it never has never sat quite right with me. But then you look at it from the side and there's this colossal cannon hanging down underneath it, which I really like the look of. I love the look of that. It's, it's properly threatening and scary. And I think, to be honest, if I was ever to do something with Necrons again, and Zeraz is making it very difficult not to think about it. I would be really, really tempted to like scrap a good portion of the kit and do something weird with it. You know, instead of having those pieces hanging down, cut parts of them off and not have that piece at the front sticking out. 
I think I would. Uh, there's a lot you could do with it to make it interesting and different while still still retaining the same sort of feel. Yeah, it's it's just one that's never quite sat right. Okay, now the Tomb Blades. These really surprised me the first time I saw these, but I actually really like them. They are really odd. They're really strange. You've you've got like again you've got that that cool kind of spine section coming up. You've got it looks so much more permanent. The pilots in these, the way they're hanging down and are plugged into this thing. They look difficult to difficult to work out how they work. They have a properly a properly alien, like strange alien, incomprehensible design to them, which I really, really like. And the the kind of plugged in nature as though they're they are kind of properly like properly integrated with these. I really like that aspect of it. They are just they are just super weird. They're super weird models. Really odd, but in the best way. I think they I think they yeah, they they, they suit the Necrons really well. And they look more I don't know, more fleshed out than than uh than the destroyers do. Okay, I mean what can you say about the the classic Necron Warrior, <laughs> still the same as when I bought them. Um, <laughs> the plastic rods, still not sure. Even now, even now, I'm not sure. Uh, I, I wasn't sure back, like way back when. I'm still not sure now. It's definitely a look that nothing else has got. I will say that if you if you want to slam out an army real quick. Necrons are not a bad shout. You can give them a coat of, you can give them a, like a base coat of lead belcher. Give them a wash and pick out some details in whatever highlight color you want, and you're done. Which, I mean, there's a lot to be said for that if you want to just get a, an army quickly made. They do still look threatening. They do still look the right side of spooky. There's a couple of them where the poses are a little bit, a little bit weird, but I mean, I, I seem to remember trying to convert one to look as though he was about to smack someone with the blade on the edge of his edge of his, on the end of his gun, and it did not work. It did not look good. It's in terms of poses, they're pretty inoffensive, you know. There's not a huge amount of movement, but then why would they be? They're Necrons. I think they've held up pretty decently. I think they're they're solid enough in the design and they're solid enough in the sculpting that really they they've lasted okay and will probably continue to last for quite some time. Now the Lich Guard, I think did these guys replace pariahs? Because I had pariahs and then they were gone. And instead there was I think it was Lich Guard replaced them. I'm a little bit hazy on exactly when things were ditched and replaced with other stuff, but I do like the Lich Guard. I do like them. They, it feels like they have sort of nods too, but they're a lot more kind of they're closer to the warrior slash immortal in their design. The headdress element I quite like. I'd almost like them to be a little bit more prominent in places. The weapons I really like. They do look good. Overall, I think it's a, I think it's a pretty solid, pretty solid kit. Because there's the Lich Guard, is it the Praetor Praetorians as well? I think I've got those. Uh, I think I've got those uh, set up as well. But yeah, they did. I think they look decent. I do like the shields as well. The shields are the shields are cool. I think the axes I like more than the shields that go with them. Just because the whereas I do like that kind of spine motif that they have going on. In the shields, it feels a little bit odd at the bottom. Although, really, that can just be explained by it being an energy shield as opposed to just a physical shield. So it's not really that big a complaint. Yeah, they do look funky. So yeah, the uh, the Triarch Praetorians, I the big like cables that come out of the shoulders into the spine, going over the head. I really like the uh, the large kind of circle they've got in the center of the forehead. Looks cool. 
they are a decent looking unit. They they look really quite top heavy, which makes them look almost more muscular, even though there's no muscle there, they're just metal. It is a cool design. It is a cool design that works really well. Yeah, it's it's a it is a fun unit. It is good. Now, flayed ones uh, flayed ones are too expensive for what they are now. I mean, like monetarily, these guys are still in uh, in fine cast, I believe. In fact, let's let's have a quick check. Ninety nine percent sure. Uh, yes, finely detailed resin cast miniatures. Oh, twenty seven fifty. Oh, so bad. Now, I'm not a huge fan of these ones. I I vaguely. I vaguely remember having some flayed ones for my Necrons, and I'm reasonably sure that they're not the same ones. I don't remember the dude with the body strapped to his back. I don't remember that at all. Um, I also don't remember, like, vats of blood and wires on any of them, either. They... I don't know. I, I It feels like they started out creepy. They wanted flesh. They wanted skin, so they would take it from the uh, from the things they killed and drape it over themselves. And then that somehow became sticking entire torsos onto them, which I don't really understand how that like how that works. Just looking at it, I don't understand how that works. Like strapping vats of blood to yourself with I don't know it feels like somewhere it feels like somewhere someone missed the point and instead of instead of like making them instead of leaning into the thing that makes them scary which is the fact that they are effectively insane and want skin so take it from the things they've killed instead they went well what would look more scary than just skin and it's like well they don't that's not really that that doesn't work. It doesn't need to be any more than that. The concept of what they are is scary enough. You know, you can make them terrifying without having to put half a person strapped to them. It's like that's not necessary for what they are. It doesn't do anything to uh, to improve them. It just doesn't quite look right to me. Which is a shame, because I really like the idea of the flayed ones. Mind you, with the sheer wealth of stuff that you can get now, I'd imagine... Yeah, converting your own would be super, super simple. Good. I mean, they're a nice concept. I just don't... I just don't feel these ones. Okay, I mean, death marks, I love. I straight up love death marks. They are one of the coolest models in the range for me. The single eye in the head, the the carapace that comes up and over the back of the head, the rifles. There's like none of you, none of your plastic, your green plastic uh, insert in there. They just look solid. They just properly look solid. They look scary. They look like hunters, which is sensible because that's what they are. But there's a there's an intent to. The entire lineup that works really well. They just look flat out menacing in the best way. Cla like immortals, yeah, there's never going to be any complaint about immortals from me. I, I love, I love me some immortals. They're, they're a great looking unit. They really are. Chunkier, beefier Necrons with bigger guns. Can you still get the ones that just have the plastic insert, or are those gone now? I think they're just gone, because there's there's the heavy Gauss ca rifle cannon, Ooh, whichever one it is, and then there's the Tesla one as well, isn't there? I think that's the Tesla version. Because, again, this is one of those units where I absolutely love them. And they still look good. They still look super good. Yeah, they just look, they just look so much heavier and just chunkier plus i'm a big i'm a sucker for models that hold their guns like one hand uh, on on the grip and one hand like above the barrels I, I don't know why i love that pose that maybe that is something that was influenced by the uh, by the immortals of old that i had 
God knows I've converted enough models now to have that pose. Maybe that's had a lasting effect on me, and I didn't even think about it. Interesting. But I, it, there's not. You, there's just nothing to complain about with the mortals. They look great. They look really good. Solid unit. Oh, I mean, destroyers. I still love the destroyers. The thing is, they they don't look quite as good as um, it's like say the tomb blades do now, and they, they they've had the benefit of being newer. I do still like the destroyers. They do still look good. The guns look a bit. They. I mean, it's fair to say that they look dated now. They do look dated because they've got the four plastic bits. There's a lack of detail that, like, I mean, when you look at when you look at the immortals, when you look at the uh, the death marks, when you look at the melee weapons on uh, on the Praetorians and on the Lich Guard. In fact, when we go back to the uh, the tomb the tomb blades, I mean, there's 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 just more detail. There's more detail on the weapons there than on the. Uh, oh, skipped ahead, skipped ahead. Where are they? I've lost them. There we go. On the uh, <laughs> on the on the Necron destroyers, there's just more detail on their weapons than on these. Also, check out the wasted space on that sprue. Oh my god, Games Workshop is so much better at putting stuff on sprues <laughs> over the. Over the years, that there's so much. I mean, I got I got some Primaris delivered today, right? And holding that sprue up to this one is just it is insane how much wasted space there is on there. It's unreal. <laughs> you couldn't pack anything more onto uh onto the stuff I got today. That you could fit an entire other destroyer on there probably if you wanted to. Again, I've got such a soft spot for them, though. Such a soft spot. The cables coming out from under the chest look cool. The uh, the the kind of added targeting stuff that goes over the skull. It's in the skull, but it's also over the skull. It's a really cool touch. Yeah, I, I do I do like them. I do like them. Same for the uh, same for the heavy destroyer, which I just don't see these very often anymore. I'm assuming they're just not they're just not worth taking, I guess. I just don't I just don't ever see them. When people post their Necron armies, there is a distinct lack of heavy destroyers. Mind you, how much is it as an upgrade pack of a five fifty? So if you wanted to do if you wanted to do three heavy destroyers, you'd have to buy you'd have to buy three normal destroyers, which is thirty quid. Oh god. And then five fifty to upgrade one. Um, well, tell me it upgrades more than one. One Necron Heavy Destroyer upgrade pack. And it's a resin cast set. Ugh. That is gross. That is dire. So you need to buy the plastic destroyers first, which are three for 30 quid. For a, I mean, how old is that school now? Jesus. And then you've got to spend uh, 11 quid? £16.50. So you'll get £46.50 for... A squad of three heavy destroyers and its resin components to upgrade them in the first place. That's a real mess. Uh, no, no. I might like the look of them. I might think they look awesome, which they do. But that is just not worth it. Also, even looking at it, the, that gun is not straight. <laughs> That's all sorts of wong. The jank is off the scale with the uh, thickness of the gun there. Oh dear. Oh, what a disappointment. Oh, I'm gutted now. <laughs> I don't know why. That just made me sad. It's so expensive. So old. Anyway, Canoptech Wraiths. These, I absolutely love these. Massive difference to the race that I used to have, which were metal and terrible to put together and fell apart at the drop of a hat. Uh, these, I, I love them. They're really well done. I think, to be honest, I've seen, I, I have seen people say that they prefer the old ones because the old ones have more of a horror element. I'd say these are still pretty scary. They're, them being more insectoid, I think, I think means that they are still pretty damn creepy. They have that, that nice kind of inhuman feel to them. Kind of un, unfeeling, un, uncaring faces. Again, you've got that that nice motif of the uh, of the spine going going down the back there. 
thing that's interesting to me is that the, the, the carapaces on these are so close to the destroyer carapace. It's the same for the spider. They all have like a shared shared sort of look to them. But it feels like the destroyers have been very much left behind and it's almost almost forgotten, I guess, in a way. Maybe that's not I'm honest I say that just because, you know, the the Canartic Wraiths and the Spider are, are a lot newer than the destroyers are, so it makes it feel like they've moved on whilst the destroyers haven't. But I don't know if that's even a fair a fair uh a fair thing to to say. But that's how it feels anyway to me. I'm happy to be wrong. I'm wrong all the time. It is a really cool looking unit. I do like it a lot. I, I think this is one of the I think one of my favourites out of this out of this range. Same with the uh the spider actually. Again, we'll uh, we'll cover the old, like do like a comparison of the old Necron stuff to uh, the newer stuff uh, during the week. But uh, for me, this spider is a vast improvement on the one that came before it. I still have one of the old metal ones, and it just it doesn't quite match up <laughs> in terms of detail, in terms of interesting stuff. It's uh yeah, it's a good looking model. It is definitely a good looking model. It's creepy, it's weird. It's also <laughs> looks pretty damn heavily armed. I can't remember exactly what the armaments used to get on a uh, on a Tomb Spider was. I think you got like a, a melee option and maybe one maybe one gun? What was the gun? Oh, I can't remember. But yeah, I I do I do like these. It's there's the, I think it's a, it's a strange it's a strange mix in a way. You've got that kind of you know space Egyptians thing going on, but you also have this creepy crawly thing going as well. I have to admit, I think I'm more of a fan of the creepy crawly side of things. Probably why the new Illuminor Zeras uh, is is like just right for me. It it kind of it embraces that side more. Okay, now the shard of the deceiver. And the Shard of the Nightbringer. Both of these, I believe, are resin. I'm just going to do a quick check. Yeah, finely detailed resin casket. Still better than metal. My Nightbringer is metal. And again, absolute nightmare. I think, to be honest, they've not aged too bad. They don't look bad. They don't look bad at all. I think they, they're they holding up really, really well. Mind you, I seem to remember being very impressed with them when they were first released. It is still... A little bit weird to read Shard of as opposed to just the Nightbringer. But then, then again, reasonably speaking, <laughs> deploying actual gods onto the battlefield was kind of dumb. Um, I, I'm more than... <laughs> oh, decent looking... Uh, oh, that's quite a nice army. Cool, that's bright in the bottom right. Yeah, yeah. At first, it was like, oh, back in... Oh, I remember being able to feel the actual Nightbringer and then thinking, why was I able to feel that? That's, that's incredibly silly. Yes, I shall deploy the power of an actual god. Oh, wait. <laughs> that makes no sense. They do look good, though. I mean, Nightbringer's still my favourite. Oh, it, it just... It's just classic. It's just classic. Grim Reaper-esque. You know, you can't go wrong with that, can you? You can't go wrong with it. And it is definitely holding up well. That's quite a cool paint job too. That's almost got some like non-metallic metal stuff going on, but I don't think that's the intention. I think it's supposed to just be a bit grey and blue, but it's it's come out sort of like that. Maybe that was the intention. Maybe I'm being unfair. Looks good though. Okay, and the some of the many not a uh, just normal cryptech to start with, which I think is a decent model. I do like this. The oversized uh, scarab spider thing going on down there. There's a specific name for it. I forget what it's called right now. This obviously does lean quite heavily towards the Egyptian thing with the big old uh, the big old chin ornament there. But it also it also does adopt some of the skittery insect nonsense as well, which I like. It's a good mix between the two. The cloak is is cool. The uh, the nod towards the uh, carapace on the on the wraiths and the spider and the destroyers on the back is is funky and also quite reminiscent of the shields on the uh, lich guard as well. It's it's a decent model. I do like it. 
And one of the few, one of the few not, not jumping off a rock. Admittedly, there is a bit of scenery there that he's uh, attached to, but it's not a rock. That's the important thing. Now, the Necron Overlord, I really like this. I really like this. My only gripe is that I would prefer the scythe to be facing the other way, but you can easily spin it round. You can, uh, you can, you can give it a chop. Give it a chop just above the hand. Rotate the whole thing. Pin it if you need to to make sure that it's still stable. But you can totally, you can totally change the scythe round. It's, uh, yeah, it's it's cool imagery with a distinctly, uh, distinctly Necron slant, which is fun. I do like the big, um, the big kind of carapace on the back as well. Replacing his head with a death mark head, I've seen a few people do that, and it looks really cool. But yeah, it's it's again, I think that's a decent looking model. That is a decent looking model. Then we get into the vast array of named characters. So uh so Nemazor Zandrek. I think all of these from now on are are resin jobs. I'm just gonna do a quick yeah, resin casket. I don't know how many like how many of these are going to be updated over the years? It'd be nice if it was all of them, but I I would be surprised if it was. Zandrek has the the most bitching of cloaks that comes down from his arms all the way down. I mean, that's, I I'm complaining about it being resin, but at least on this one, it's pretty decent. There's not really anything wrong with it. The staff's a little bit bent in the middle, but apart from that, it's fine. It's only a little bit. And it is a cool-looking character. It does look good. I, I, the, the view from the back is very different to a lot of the other stuff that the Necrons have, which is nice. Feels very individual. I think that's one of the things I like about all these different characters. They are so all different and unique. Ah, now. <laughs> the old Illuminal Zeraz. This one's not going to be made available ever again, is it? <laughs> Even if production starts up, I'd imagine we're probably not going to see this one come back now that the other one's been unveiled. To say that Zeraz got an upgrade is to... Uh, it's to put it pretty mild. Um, good grief. In fact, I'll stick... I'll stick, uh, I'll stick the uh, other Zeraz, the new one, um, in the video so, <laughs> so you can see the difference. Particularly... Particularly severe, the difference here. I will say, I think the new one looks exceptionally better in every single way. Um, it's so much more imposing, interesting, threatening, dangerous. Uh, it just... It's not bad, this, but... It's a weird... It's a weird sculpt positioned in a weird way. I'm literally like tilting my head to kind of get a feel for the pose a bit better. I think it's just it's like he's got the two arms, but the two arms are in normal place, and then there's like another little weird little mandible arm that's near the sort of neck area, which obscures the face off one side. We can't spin him round, so we can't even get a decent look at him. But uh, yeah, the new one, I think, I think definitely, definitely better, definitely better. Oh, sorry, I forgot we had uh, just another normal um, Overlord with Warsythe. Paint job on this one I really like. The cloak is okay. The pose, I, I like the pose a lot. And uh, this is one of those ones that looks kind of a bit chunkier, a bit beefier. It is a, it is a decent looking model. Again, slight curvage on the Warsythe there, which is a bit rough. I like the pauldrons on this one as well. This one just feels like there's a lot to be cleaned up when it comes to to getting it ready. There's quite a bit of carving and detail and stuff in it. But it does look cool. It is a decent looking model. Oricon the Diviner, I really like it because it's just creepy as anything. That is just an outright scary Necron. That is just terrifying. Look at it. It just fully looks like it's screeching in your face. It's, it's actually, it is, I'd say, properly scary. The uh, the way the, the headdress kind of comes all the way round to the uh, to the chin there. The just open mouth, the single massive eye. 
It is a creepy, creepy model. <laughs> good job on that one. I've forgotten how bad that was. Bad in a good way. Imotech the Stormlord, which is still my favourite named one of, of all. The name is great. The big chunky hand is terrifying, which I really like. There's a, a nice amount of detail on the cloak, and there's some like nice little kind of embossed kind of carving things going on on the shoulders and the the top of the legs there as well, which is which is a nice touch. It is is a good looking model. It is a good looking model. The pose is a little odd. Not really sure what he's doing with his hand. Whether he's gonna you know maybe he's just about to flip someone the bird or something. I don't know. But it is a decent model overall. <laughs> and uh, Anrique the Traveller, I think, has got the coolest weapon of all of them. It, it's, it's wonderfully over the top and excessive. There really are so many characters. It's so easy to forget how many characters there are for the Necrons. But they really did well out of, uh, out of characters. Very, like, very looking down on you sort of pose for that one. Traz in the Infinite, we all love. How can you not? How can you not like, uh... <laughs> the ultimate troll? I... The thing that I like about this model is the sort of hunched over... There's like a hunched old man thing going on, which I really like. Again, it has a personality of its own. It doesn't... Sort of stands apart. The cloak is very over the top, which again I think is maybe a bit, maybe like very sort of traveller's traveller's cloak as well. Yeah, I do like that one. My favourite though is uh, is is Vargard Oberon. I don't know why I just I just really like this model. It just looks badass. It just flat out looks badass. I think there being so much extra armor around the neck, the head being slightly more sunken in, it being tilted forward slightly, it all just adds up to uh, to give a very threatening, a very threatening, very no nonsense. And uh, even though he's obviously in a static pose, he just looks like he's gonna beat, just beat you to death for looking at him. And it's getting that kind of vibe from a. Uh, like a, a metal skeleton with a big stick with a blade on the end, which is effectively what Necrons are. That's I think that's pretty decent. That shows uh, a good a good eye for like uh, like attitude when it comes to posing. Oh, I really that that's one model that I I keep meaning to get just so I have it in case it ever disappears. It is good. It is really good. We've got the old Cryptek as well, of course. The newer one, I think, looks better. Yeah, I think the newer one definitely looks better. It's not a bad-looking model, but... I wouldn't even say showing its age. I'd just say maybe maybe not standing as tall as it could. It still looks okay. And then we've got the, uh, the OG Necron Lord with Resurrection Orb, <laughs> which I remember... Very inflated chest. Now I look at it again. <laughs> Very inflated chest. Sort of a weird... It's a weird looking model. Now I look at it again. After all these years. Cape on the back. Just a normal cloth cape. None of the others have got a cloth cape. They've all got like weird tech capes. The war scythe is... Yeah. Yeah, Interesting. And the uh, Destroyer Lord upgrade pack. I had a Destroyer Lord. I loved it. Absolutely loved it. Still looks cool. Still looks cool. Looks awesome, the Destroyer Lord. Again, not aging particularly well, <laughs> to be fair. It's definitely showing his age a fair bit. But, uh, but yeah. Very nostalgic for me, anyway. I'll tell you what, let's go back to... Uh, Let's go back to this chap to finish off. So yeah, that was a look at the Necron range. I do like it overall. I do like it overall. There are things that were just, I guess, hammered into me from uh, playing them very early on where there's an expectation to see a certain stuff um, that 
has not like coloured my view, I guess, but has made me lean towards a certain type of uh, aesthetic for the Necron stuff, which some of it doesn't quite follow. But then again, I think looking through it, it's not. It's a range that you can quite easily do some fun stuff with. You know, you can make your own stuff out of it pretty easily. There's a lot of spare bits going from various different kits that you could probably do interesting things with. And any complaints like like mine, for instance, of having that more that idea of kind of integrated uh, integrated stuff is easily done. I don't think it's something that actually would take very much effort at all to adapt and mess with. So, yeah, I... I do like this range overall. There is some heavy nostalgia value. There's also a lot of stuff that is totally different to what I've what I had, uh, which would be fun to go through. Fun to go through in another video. But this was already like nearly an hour long, so you can see why I've split them up. Let me know what you think of this range in the comments down below. Which is your favourite character? Which is your favourite model? If you are a Necron player, just when it comes to uh, especially the Obelisk and Tesseract Vault. Uh, is one of them flat out better than the other? Do they just do different things? And could I get away with just having the, ob the obelisk and never messing with the test rack vault? Be interested to know what you think. Let me know in the comments. In the meantime, feel free to click all the things, Patreon video, subscribe, all that stuff. Click it if you like. Don't click it if you don't want to. And of course, there's an affiliate link for Element Games in the description. You know how that works. It's a nice way to support the channel if you want to use it. I'll leave it up to you. Thank you very much for watching. I'll see you next time.